you know, when we see the, the forest fires in California, it's very visible to everybody. It's, it's topside, it's on the news, it's very easy to get footage of it and to share that footage with the world. The loss of our marine ecosystems, it is, it is the invisible crisis, and yet it's such a critical one. Alice Granger, with an organization called the Coral Restoration Foundation, is talking about the loss of coral reef systems around the world. They are being decimated globally and rapidly. The biggest threat to coral reefs is climate change. There's no doubt about it. All of the science is there. Perhaps nowhere is the loss more painfully obvious than off the Florida Keys, where 98% of the reef system is dead. Just a slight uptick in water temperature is to blame for the widespread mortality. All right, you want to grab some tubs? Yeah. And I'll get some epoxy in here. Out planning sheets. This is a scene that plays out three or so times a week at the Key Largo headquarters of the Coral Restoration Foundation, or CRF. Scientist Alex Neufeld right. and Dan Berdeno are getting ready for a day in the water. Both caught the diving bug at an early age. Now Dan and Alex are becoming leaders in the field, and their research could help reefs all over the world. Coral reefs occupy only 1% of the sea floor, but they're home to about 25% of marine species. So they are, you know, even beyond the rainforests of the sea in terms of a biodiversity standpoint. They also provide the protein source for about a billion people worldwide. Just give me a thumbnail sketch of what the reef situation is off the coast of Florida. Yeah, so the, the Florida Coral Reef Tract is a very heavily degraded reef. Um, we've had detrimental effects going on you know, since the 70s for, for decades. Um, whether it's effects from climate change and warming water temperatures, whether it's local stressors, you know, due to pollution and or development and sedimentation. And so what this means is that our reefs are now primarily just rocky seafloor. Good to go. At a depth of fewer than 10 meters, these artificial trees are the key to the Coral Restoration Foundation's success. You're looking at healthy staghorn and elkhorn coral, two of the fastest growing corals in the world. They are thriving, being cultured just off Florida's coast. Essentially, we want to provide 360 degrees of nutrients for the corals sunlight, but also water flow in the column. And so how do we get the corals hanging mid-water in the water column? How do we make sure that they're happy? When they have their polyps out, they look kind of fuzzy. You know, a fuzzy coral is a happy coral. It's got all its little tentacles out. Um, that means it's not only is, it, is the algae photosynthesizing, but the coral is actually feeding as well in the water column. You saw the largest offshore coral tree nursery anywhere in the world thousands of individual coral colonies, all of endangered species, that we work with on a daily basis. Corals are animals. They have mouths and feed with tentacles. They have a symbiotic relationship with algae, and this unique partnership allows coral to flourish. Through photosynthesis, the algae not only provide coral with enough food to grow, it also provides oxygen and removes waste. They are amazing creatures. So if we lose the coral reefs, which is what we're facing without immediate action, without working to mitigate and reverse the effects of climate change, we're taking out you know, a, a keystone component of our oceans. And, you know, humanity has never before faced the loss of an entire ecosystem, you know, in the whole history of our species. Coral has had to cope with disease and pollution. Warming oceans are stressing coral around the world. It leads to bleaching. And if temperatures remain too warm too long, 
This bleaching kills coral. When the coral gets too hot, the algae actually overproduces. And that, you know, the coral senses that as a problem, it senses that as a foreign body. And essentially what's called coral bleaching is a stress response. The coral restoration team clips a bit of staghorn and elkhorn coral from the trees, leaving a healthy portion to continue to grow. It will be harvested on another day. This hard surface, where scientists plant the coral using adhesive, is actually a dead reef. The hard substrate took thousands of years to develop, and in places, sadly, only a few decades to be destroyed. But life is starting to bloom here again. In 2021, CRF hopes to plant 40,000 staghorn and elkhorn coral. You know, you guys, what, 40,000 you say you hope to do this year? Is that enough or is it simply scratching the surface? It is simply scratching the surface, but it represents a monumental shift from where we came from. And so in that regard, it is more than enough because it gets us into a space where suddenly 50,000 a year doesn't seem far-fetched. At the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science, University of Miami professor Andrew Baker is making efforts to restore coral reefs his life's work. Coral reef restoration is going to be just like reforestation, where the results of our efforts in 2021 are not really going to be seen until 2040, 2050, so it's definitely a long term. Baker spends less time in the water these days and more time in his research labs. Baker and his team of young scientists are trying to, in essence, cross-breed coral from warmer waters with staghorn coral from Florida's coast. The goal is to create a coral that will survive the ills of climate change and take root here. If there's something that keeps me up at night, it, it's, the, it's the idea that um, we could be working, we, we are working so hard on saving these ecosystems consisting of these tiny little organisms that are so exceptionally environmentally vulnerable and we may ultimately fail. This is not a, an, a business to be in if you're not an optimist and I'm definitely a glass half full sort of a person. I, I never give up hope. The fact that there's you know, actively growing corals here off of Miami and still some pretty amazing reefs that you can find in the Florida Keys are a testament to me to the fact that we've still got everything to play for. The problem with climate change is obviously it's a global phenomenon. It's, and it's very indirect. Actions that someone can have thousands of miles from the nearest coral reefs ultimately have this impact on these reef ecosystems that are in such a delicate balance. In 2017, Hurricane Irma was the most powerful storm to hit the continental United States since Katrina, more than a decade earlier. Okay, so this is, this is what the area looked like pre-Irma. So if we zoom in here, okay. we can see, you know, some really nice um, thickets of, of staghorn that we had on this ledge. And then Irma came through, and this is what that same ledge looks like with the same corals, just tiny little bases left. So we that went from something you know, wow. that looked like this and then this little line of, wow. of corals right here. Another sign, scientists say, that climate change is bringing more fierce storms more often. When you first saw this after the hurricane, what went through your mind? Oh, it was, I mean, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep working at CRF, to be honest that you know, something could happen like that that you have no control over. And the last you know, 10 years worth of work on this site was just gone. But Neufeld stayed. And so did other young scientists. Then more researchers came. 
So we got through that, but in the moment, I think it really impressed upon us the scale of the fight that we have because there is so much potentially that is out of our control. Despite all the challenges, Alex still has hope they will win the race against climate change.